But first, in less than 12 hours, a House committee meets to vote and get one step closer to Congress, perhaps holding Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt. The question right now, is there any chance the Attorney General will make an after-hours delivery of documents to Congressman Issa and avoid tomorrow's contempt vote? Now, a few hours ago, House Oversight Chair Daryl Issa and Attorney General Holder taking one last stab at a resolution. So, how did that meeting go? We asked Chairman Issa. Chairman, nice to see you, sir. Thanks for having me back on, Greta, on this important subject. All right, so did you get the documents tonight from the Attorney General of the United States that you had subpoenaed? Sadly, no. We not only didn't get the documents, but the only offer we got was an offer that if we would take a briefing followed by such documents as they think support the briefing and agree to end the case, we could go our separate ways. Uh, the Attorney General did not come with any offer of any documents except as a contingent for ending the case outright, and he didn't bring any list of any documents or, for that matter, anything in writing. I suppose he could have made a phone call to you making that same offer um, rather than sort of this uh, journey that we've been through for the last 24 hours waiting to see what would happen. Well, sadly, what happened in this meeting was exactly what happened in our exchange of letters. We said we need the documents and we'd evaluate them. Uh, we limited the scope, extremely limited. And uh, he kept saying that he wanted to have a meeting, so he's had the meeting. Uh, we didn't close the door. I let him know that if he would produce meaningful documents, meaningful relative to the subpoena and the speaker's request, uh, before tomorrow's startup, we would certainly uh, uh, postpone and evaluate those documents, but I, I'm not optimistic at this point. Well, how late are you open for business tonight, and is there any indication there will be a delivery tonight? We'll be here all night. Uh, our offices will be open uh, until after the markup is completed tomorrow. Did, uh, does this mean it is uh, assuming that there are no documents that come from the Department of Justice, the Attorney General, between now and tomorrow about 10 a.m., does this mean that you intend to go full speed ahead and seek to hold him in contempt, or at least vote it out of the committee? Well, Greta, we have no choice but to, uh, for, if, for a refusal to deliver documents that are relevant to a lawful subpoena, we have no doubt but to, uh, and no choice but to hold them in contempt. It's not our choice. We want the documents. Brian Terry's family would like the documents uh, that are responsive to how, in fact, their son was gunned down with weapons that came from uh, lawful dealers, but at the bequest of, uh, behest of the uh, Justice Department. Have you had any conversation in the last uh, 36, 48 hours with the Speaker of the House as to anything about this uh, request or Fast and Furious? Well, we've stayed in touch with the Speaker's staff. Uh, really, his letter laid out a very reasonable, extraordinarily reasonable limitation on what it would take to prevent contempt. Uh, and we further narrowed that after the discovery of the wiretap. So I think the Speaker has spoken pretty loudly. Uh, he stands, I believe, shoulder to shoulder with all of us saying, please just give us the documents we need to conclude our investigation. What is the practice? I mean, let's assume, let's jump in. Let's assume tomorrow there's a vote out of your committee for contempt, and let's assume that uh, there's a, a, a vote from the House of Representatives for contempt. What's the practical effect? What, what, do, you, what do you get in the end? Is there, you don't get your documents, but what do you get? Well, sadly, the Attorney General said in the meeting that uh, if we go forward with contempt, we'd get no cooperation from that time forward. Uh, on the other hand, he said if we would take the briefing, we'd have to ha close the case. So we're sort of between a rock and a hard spot. We, uh, we really have to go forward. Uh, yes, contempt uh, is unusual, and the U.S. attorney pleading the case uh, before a federal judge in D.C. Uh, can take some time. And unfortunately, during that time, we don't expect to get a lot of new discovery. But again, you really have no choice when... Uh, the executive branch says, no, we won't allow you to look into misconduct within the executive branch. Tonight, uh, the Attorney General said, and one of my colleagues, Chad Pergram, was there, he said, we have, this is in part, we have made available an unprecedented number of documents that might, that might resolve this matter. Let me ask you, have they provided an unprecedented number of documents? 
Not at all. 7,600 documents, roughly, uh, almost half of which are, are regarding an operation that ended during the Bush administration, uh, is far from complete. And, and let's remember, the, uh, the inspector generals, there's been two of them looking into this, have received over 80,000 pages. So on a scale of what we've asked for that's limited, on a, scale, on a, on a fact basis of what we know exists, uh, obviously it's insufficient. Again, uh, what we've asked for is limited. We're not looking for information that would lead to the interruption of any ongoing criminal case. But we are looking for the misconduct that occurred with injustice, giving us false testimony, and then standing by it for the best part of a year. Do you think the Attorney General is deliberately trying to cover something up or that he has a difference of opinion as to what he should turn over to you, even lawfully turn over to you? Well, I think often what happens is to avoid embarrassment, they don't provide information or they cover up what they know and then the cover-up becomes the problem again we're looking simply to get to the bottom of how it was that guns were allowed to walk and the administration would tell us that guns never allowed to walk when in fact they were and then another uh, best part of a year went by uh, from february to november before they finally retracted that and said yes we really did let guns walk all right, tell me what happened. He shows up at the Capitol and uh, you greet him out. Where did you meet? How long did it take? What was it like inside? We met in one of the upstairs conference rooms on the third floor of the Capitol, sort of right beneath the rotunda. Uh, Senator Leahy, uh, Congressman uh, Cummings, uh, the uh, De Deputy Attorney General Cole and the Attorney General on one side, uh, Senator Grassley and myself on the other side. Uh, we were hoping to hear about what the documents would be and see some of them. Instead, they presented no paper, and they simply told us in, in return for ending the investigation, they would give us a briefing and some supportive documents, but we'd had to agree to end the investigation outright without seeing the documents. And, and Greta, you've been an attorney. You've certainly gone through discovery. Nobody agrees to a settlement based on documents not seen, and that's exactly what we were asked to do. So what did you say to him when he told you that? What were your words to him? Well, what I said really was that uh, I would certainly hold the doors open until tomorrow morning, until we, uh, we go to the markup, uh, in the hopes that he would change his mind and deliver a meaningful amount of documents responsive to the subpoena. Uh, very clearly, he knew. He, you know, he was a line attorney for 12 years. He knew we couldn't take this deal. It wasn't a good faith offer based on what he would do if he were on the other side of the table. We have an obligation to find out who was responsible, and he hasn't fired anyone, so it's kind of hard to believe that he's found out who's responsible. All right, it's a very short meeting, as best I can figure out. Somebody called, you know, it's over, time's up. Who said, all right, the, you know, who said this is over, or I assume someone said it's going nowhere. Who said what to end this? Well, that's, that's always a question. And, and in this case, uh, Senator Leahy got up and said, I've got to go back to a vote. Uh, Senator Grassley uh, got up shortly thereafter. Uh, Mr. Cummings got up to go, uh, to go and, and then I got up. But ultimately, the, the meeting had resolved everything that we could go back and forth. Probably 20 minutes earlier, uh, we gave opportunity for Mr. Cole, for the Attorney General Holder, uh, for Senator Leahy, and for Mr. Cummings to each state their positions. And that took about five minutes apiece. Did he know the Attorney General? Did you communicate, him, communicate to him right then and there, look, I'm going forward tomorrow. Did you tell him that? I did. I told him that, uh, that he gave us nothing that would cause us and not he, to go forward, but that we would hold the doors open for actual discovery. And he said what to your, when you told him that? Well, uh, he started through the, uh, the same line that he used in public statements uh, that you've seen uh, in, before judiciary, unprecedented access, uh, nobody can give you the deliberative process, we're willing to do it, but it's unprecedented. And again, uh, we're, uh, we're sorry to have to ask for this information, but I think the American people by now, if they've been following Fast and Furious, know that we don't have answers relative to who was responsible for Brian Terry as it went up the chain. We certainly don't have uh, any information about how a, a document that was false remained out there for 10 months. What was his demeanor when you told him that uh, no dice, I'm going forward? And that's my word, no dice, obviously. 
It was a calm meeting. Uh, I think that the exchange of letters told us that unless positions changed, we'd end up where we are. Uh, he came in basically consistent with uh, a much earlier letter that said that he would provide us a briefing and then documents that supported what? it. But, let, but let's understand, the problem is he's already reached the conclusion that they did nothing wrong. His briefing very clearly is going to tell us they did nothing wrong, that he's made the changes necessary uh, because of the failed policy that began during the Bush administration, and he ended, and, uh, and that he would give us such documents as he deemed we needed to understand that he was innocent. Uh, that's an interesting uh, defense. It's one that I don't think you'd ever uh, suggest be used in a court. Congressman, thank you, sir, and uh, we'll look forward to see uh, what happens tomorrow, and uh, I hope you come back soon, sir. Of course. Thank you.